We're on 7.3, solving exponential equations found on pages 358 to 365 in your text. We're working on our same curriculum outcome. We're learning about exponential equations, so we can now learn about logarithmic equations next unit. Our lesson objectives. Number one, we need to learn how to solve an exponential equation algebraically. And number two, we need to learn how to solve exponential equations that describe real world situations. So when solving exponential equations, you need to try and rewrite the bases on each side of the equation so that they have the same base. Then the exponents are equal. So you also need to remember all of your exponent rules. Those are key in order to rewrite bases. And you need to remember that these exponent rules only work when you have the same base. So our first rule, um, x to the a times x to the b, means that we add the exponents when we are multiplying with the same base. When we have a power raised to an exponent, we multiply the exponents together x to the negative n, if we have a negative exponent, that means that we find the reciprocal of what we have, and now that exponent becomes positive. And you need to remember the rules dealing with roots as well. The nth root of x is really just x to the power of 1 over n, and if we're taking the nth root of x to a power, that's the same thing as saying the nth root of x raised to a power, and that is the same thing as saying x to the power of m over n. So here's our first two examples. It says solve the following exponential equations. So this is 2 to the power of 4x equals 4 to the power of x plus 3. So what you want to do, as I said before, is you want to write these with the same base. So the smallest base that both 2 and 4 can be written with is the base of 2. So we're going to rewrite 4 as 2 squared. And that is still raised to the power of x plus 3. So we're just rewriting bases so that they have the same base. So now this is 2 to the power of 4x oops, equals, um, when we have a power raised to an exponent, we multiply the exponents together. So that's 2 to the power of 2x plus 6. So now hopefully you can see that if we have the same base, 2 to the power of something equals 2 to the power of something, then both those exponents are actually equal to each other. So we can now ignore the base. If we didn't have the same base, we can't say the exponents are equal. So we have 4x equals 2x plus 6. Well, to solve this equation, we subtract 2x from both sides. So we get 2x equals 6. That means that x equals 3. And remember, you can always just substitute this 3 back into the equation. Check both sides and see if it works. Our second equation is 9 to the power of 4x equals 27 to the power of x minus 1. So 9 to the power of 4x, and we're looking at the bases now, so we have 9 and 27. Hopefully you can recognize that the smallest base that both these two numbers can be written as is 3. So 9 is the same as 3 squared, so that's now 3 squared to the power of 4x. Notice how I'm using brackets to make sure that I remember to multiply these exponents after. And 27 is 3 cubed. And that's still raised to the power of x minus 1. So when we multiply these exponents together, we get 3 equals 8x. And we get, not 3 equals, 3 to the power of 8x, sorry. And 3 to the power of 3x minus 3. So in the end, I get 8x equaling 3x minus 3. I can solve for this again. I subtract 3x from both sides, I get 5x equals negative 3. That means x is equal to negative 3 fifths. So that is how you solve exponential equations when you can write, rewrite them with the same base. And our final example. It says the formula for compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. So that's an important formula you might want to write on your formula sheet. Where A is the amount of money at the end of the investment, so after you invest it, P is the principal amount deposited, so how much you put in there. I is the interest rate per compounding period, that's key. And it's expressed as a decimal. And N is the number of compounding periods, which is, just means N is the number of times that they calculate your interest. So if you put it into an account and you're getting 5% um, interest uh, for the year, then you would be putting in 0 0.05 for I. If you're getting 6% interest compounded semi-annually, you would be putting in 0.03 for I. Because per compounding period, it would be 6% divided by 2. Because semi-annually means they're going to calculate your interest every two years. 
So here's our example. It says, determine how long $1,000 needs to be invested in an account that earns 8.3% compounded semi-annually, so twice a year, before it increases in value to a total of 1490. So plugging those numbers into our equation, we get 1490, which is how much we get at the end, equals 1000, which is how much we put in right at the beginning, and one plus, this is 8.3%, needs to be expressed as a decimal, but it also needs to be semi-annually. So whenever they give you um, a percentage, they're usually giving you the annual percent. So if you ever see ads about uh, investing your money, they're always giving you the annual interest rate. So we need to take half of 8.3, which is 4.15. We move the decimal over two places, so it's 0 0.0415 raised to the power of n. So we need to solve this equation. What you want to do to solve this type of equation, we can't create the same base because we don't have numbers that are easy to work with. So we're just going to do a little trial and error. Um, and the way that we do this is we, we isolate whatever has the exponent. So this is going to be 1490 divided by 1000, which is 1.49 when we're done. And this is 1.0415 to the power of n. Now, when we learn about logarithms, this equation will be easy to solve. Until we learn about logarithms, we have to do a trial and error. So if we make a little table of values, we plug in a value for n, and we should get an answer. Uh, that answer needs to be as close to 1.49 as we can make it. So I chose a number of values. I went 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And by the time I got to 10, I found that my answer was 1.50. My answer for 2 was 1.08, 1 1.18, when I plugged in a 4, when I plugged in a 6, it was 1.28, and when I plugged in an 8, it was 1.38. When I plugged in a 10, I got to 1.50, which is really close to 1.49. So this 10 is how many compounding periods they are. there are. Now, since it's being compounded semi-annually, that means that there's 10 compounding periods. It took 5 years for your money to go from $1,000 to 1490 So in summary, exponential equations can be solved in two different ways. Number one, you could rewrite each side of the equation so it has the same base. Then you have to remember that their exponents can be considered equal. Or number two, by manipulating the equation until we have the base with the exponent on one side, so you're isolating the base with the exponent to one side and a constant number on the other, then using trial and error to find out what your exponent would be. And your assignment is on pages 364 to 365. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.